Good evening. You're watching us live from Strathmore University. We have chosen this venue where we've had a lot of interesting debates. Today we are back to host the first and very important gubernatorial debate. And this is for competition for the person who will become Nairobi's first governor. It is interesting because of the divisions we have seen where we are talking about those who say they are privileged and those who say they do not have it has become a competition of the have and the have nots. We shall have that debate as we go on. Remember when we said Choice 2013 makes KTN the election station to watch, this is what we meant. So we are coming to you in this live session. It's going to be very interesting, very fruitful. We expect a lot of debate and a lot of participation from the live audience, which you shall be able to see. And my guests here, who we are just about ready to go. I want to introduce them to you so that you know who they are and so that we can get on with this session before we start wondering how much can and cannot be said. I will start from my experience. Please give us your name, your party, and why you're here. Uh, Dr. Evans Kidero, uh, member of the Orange uh, Democratic Movement, uh, which is part of the Ford Alliance. I was born in this city several years ago. I've lived here and I've seen it go through tremendous decay, through neglect and lack of investment. Nairobi is a home to 10% of the Kenyan population. It is a home to two of the largest UN agencies, UNEP and Habitat. It is a home to 42, a branch of 42 airlines and over 100 uh, multinational corporations and several hundreds of local companies. I would like Nairobi to work again. I would like the social uh, infrastructure to work, water, sewage, roads, infrastructure tra transport, health, and we just had KCP results like all the other years being released. 800,000 who did KCP, only 400 find their way to Secondary schools, which means 400, will drop 400,000 will drop out, and their aspirations are in the city of Nairobi, and I want to be the solution. Their aspir uh, their aspirations through several years of experience working for multinational organisations and private companies, I've gained enough experience, and I care. I would like to do something to get Nairobi to work again. My name is Jim Nambaru. I'm a member of Alliance Party of Kenya. I've been in this city for, for 40 years. I came here to Stralimo College for Form 5 and Form 6. But I came... I came from Lulo area and let me say this because this city has been very kind and very nice to me and which and I would like it to be the same for everyone I was brought up in the rural area the first time I wore a pair of shoes is when I went to form one in the rural areas that was after 13 or 14 years so when I came to Strathmo that was my first time to come to the city. The city has made me what I am. And I would like the city to be able to do the same for everyone of us in this country and this county. I have several programs which I will elaborate later at how we shall achieve that. But the most important thing at this particular moment in time when I am vying to be the first governor of Nairobi is to lay the foundation of an entrepreneurial city where anyone who has been born, brought up, or who has come to look for a fortune in this city will get an opportunity to reach to the height and to benefit the way I have benefited. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, audience. My name is uh, Philip Kissier, and I'm happy to be here today uh, to debate with my colleagues and good friends, my brother Evans, 
and Jimna, who I've worked with uh, at the Nairobi Interrail Oversight Board. I was born here 50 years ago, Maringo 4C, to be very specific. I've known this city for all that time that I've been on this earth, and I would want to participate in the programs of this city. My history is well known. I've had a passion for this city. Those of you who are at least 20 years and above will remember that I started the journey many years ago when I offered voluntary services as a chairman of Avenue Park Welfare Association to deal with issues that affected that particular gated community. I've also been under offered voluntary services to the business community when I was the chairman of Nairobi Central Business District Association and the journey of uh, regeneration of this great city of Nairobi started that time. It was about 1999 and Jimna was one of my members. I was his chairman. Um, <laughs> now, I, I have a very clear vision. I want Nairobi to be um, clean, secure, vibrant, and a home for everybody. Because this is where we live. Most of us know no other home other than Nairobi. And therefore, it is upon us to do what it takes to ensure that we can deliver a world-class city while still alive. I personally owe something to the city, and therefore, that is why, over the years, I have offered voluntary services to the people. Now, I have a 10-point agenda. My 10-point agenda is anchored on Vision 2030, and the Code Manifesto, which was, um, um, uh, which was launched uh, two days ago. I'll mention a few of them. The first one is security. The second one is environment, employment, solid waste management, public transport, water and sanitation, infrastructure, housing, public health, education, and service delivery to the city. And I'm happy to be here today. Um, I've, I've been here before, but as, as a guest speaker. So this is my second time, and I look forward to being invited again. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's get a welcome from the school. Stand here and you can welcome us and you can tell us who I am. Yes. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> Karibuni sana. I'm the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, of Strathmore University in charge of research. I'm also the Dean of Strathmore Business School. Nanatakwa Karibisha sana. And especially our possible future governors. Karibuni. And for those who have passed here, thank you very much for coming back here. Now to the question, Luis. Can I ask the question? Not yet. Not yet. Seba tu karibu. Karibuni sana. Thank you. Karibuni sana. Well, obviously I'm on familiar ground. And I heard you getting excited because... Wengine ni wenu? Kwani mulisoma nao? <laughs> Why are you cheering them? They were not here when you were here. This is a different order altogether. Now they belong to us. We are the ones who want to interrogate them. Uh, I need to show the viewers at home something. Uh, there's an empty chair here. Now, the reason that chair is there, the reason that chair is there is we are still expecting and hoping that uh, one other aspirant by the name of uh, Waititu shall come and join us. Simutam Karibisha came here. So, he was invited. In case any of you are wondering where Waititu is, Sijam Ficha, Karibisha, there's a chair there for him. Now we shall work with the gentlemen who have approached us to speak to them. Already, the conversation is talking about 10-point plans, people have a mission, people have a statement. I know a lot of you would appeal to the academic side. I invited a few other people. Uh, let me see how many are here, but not from Strathmore. Kuna from Tapa. Very good. Whoever is on 10-point plans, you can be able to Kama Kama Zilandu, you can 
Sai Sai Si Kesho. Philip, let me start with you. And let's be quick and brief as we go. Give them a reason why they need to vote you in. And please note that the competition you have is between those who say you understand their problems, you three gentlemen here, and those who say you sit on an ivory tower, you're clueless, you have no idea how they live. Now, um, thank you, Luis. Why Philip Kisia are not my very two good friends? One, I have a very clear history. I participated in the program of the city from the time the city started decaying. What I've delivered is there uh, on record for people to see. And therefore, I've traveled the journey with the city. I have a passion in this city. I'm passionate with what I do. And I'm forthright. I have experience that probably my two other friends don't have. I've worked in private sector at senior management level. I've worked in government. In private sector, you are more concerned about the bottom line. In, in government or in public sector, you worry about return on objectives. So these are two different ball games. Um, more, most of us probably have wishful thinking, a very clear tempered agenda on how this city can deliver to a world-class city. I'm practical. I deliver what I promise. And you can take me to account. And therefore, um, this city requires beyond people who have now seen that the city has um, an office called governor. We should not forget that uh, the governor's office is a servant leader. leader num servant leader number one. It is not seeking power. You can't say that I've now done whatever I wanted to do on this earth. The only other thing that I'm looking for is power. I am looking to provide leadership. I do not seek to be the leader because I know all of us have capacity to be leaders at one point in time. And therefore, my role will be to provide leadership in the areas that I've identified, to work with the community here in the city to deliver that 10-point agenda. Philip, that, is sorry. Your, where will you start? Now, Which uh, is highest on your list, number the, one? The, the, the highest on my list, one, is the issue of insecurity. And I, time allowing, Louis, I will not only state the problem, but I will say how we can deal with the problem. I think that's what is important, because we've had many debates, people stating the challenge, but not telling us how that problem or challenge will be delivered. The other thing, I have a proposal on how I intend to spend the budget and also reduce the operational cost of the council. Therefore, year one, I propose uh, uh, that the internal, internal revenue collection will be about nine billion, but this will be doubled by year five. Government inflows, we are expecting about 11 billion Kenya shillings. I'm expecting that um, by year five, the government transfers, um, the government transfers will be about 17.5 billion. Uh, therefore, from year one, the money that will be available uh, to the county of Nairobi for service delivery and investments will be 11 billion. By the time we get to year five, we'll have 33.5 billion shillings. Hold on, Philip. Let me hold you there. Jimna, what, wait, which is your order of priority? Where would you start? Your first day of office, what is the agenda you're starting with? My agenda is very, very clear. As I said, that we are laying the foundations for creating an entrepreneurial city. Therefore, we must start with where we are going and from where we are. In the next 15, 18 years, this city will be having about 12 million people who will be living here. So we must start asking ourselves, the journey from 4 million to 12 million, what does it entail? My first objective is to transform Nairobi to be Africa's business capital. That is the vision, that is the goal. Imagine what it means to be Africa's business capital. It means you are the headquarters of major corporations which are trading within the continent of Africa, within the region, and whoever wants to do business with Africa, the first entry point is Nairobi. Though when you create that type of an institution, that type of a county, that type of a capital, it means enormous opportunities in terms of employment, 
for the people who are leaving the universities, cleaners, watchmen, etc., etc. So that is the first vision that you want to create Africa's business capital. And we must do it quickly. I must emphasize this. Because there are others who are also aspiring that. We have our neighbor here, Kigali. They are working very hard to do that. We have also Tanzania. Arusha is also clamoring for that. Today, Addis Ababa is a, in the political capital of Africa. South Africa, Cape Town, Joburg are trying to struggle with being possible Africa's business capital. But we have an edge for other reasons, for some reasons. But that is the starting point. The second point, which is very, very important, is to understand the problems of urban poverty, unemployment, which is facing a lot of our young people, the people who are leaving the universities, colleges, you know, who finish from four and they have nowhere to go. So, and they're all coming to Nairobi. Nairobi is the entry point. That is their hope, their aspiration. So what do we want to do? We want to double the economy of Nairobi within the next five years so that we can start doubling employment opportunities, income opportunities, and other opportunities for doing commerce, getting education, and other activities within these five years. I will elaborate and I'll give three Hold pillars on. on how I will do that. Don't roll all Thank of you. them out now. Thank I want you. to hear what Dr. Terry's entry point is. Yeah. <laughs> I think the mine are probably just three. The first one is cleanliness next to cleanliness. We must live in a clean environment. Uh, I'm told if you don't drink water, you don't, eat, don't take a very long time. Nairobians don't have water and uh, garbage is not being collected. And uh, the, uh, the uh, sewage, I was looking for better words, is almost everywhere. And then when it rains, like it uh, rains this afternoon as we were coming here, uh, traffic becomes haywire because of, uh, because of drainage. So the first thing I think Nairobians need to what do you need to continue? Nairobians, the problem of water is not just an upmarket problem. But it's a problem throughout, I mean, Gidogoro, Soweto, which is at the junction uh, at the end. Uh, where, I'm, where, I'm be, where I'm being and always is that uh, there are some places, I was in um, uh, Arambe last week, they tell me they've not seen water. Their taps have been dry since 2007. So the first thing is that we must correct the water supply. Get rid of our streets of garbage and uh, uh, ensure that we live in a clean environment. The second thing during my introduction I said is that we are living on a time bomb. Uh, every year, 800,000 of our children do exams. Only half of them make it to high school. And after four years, only 50,000 go to university. So another 350,000 onto the job market. Then after another four years, the 50,000 who went to university uh, are out. Uh, uh, granted, and I agree with my friend uh, Jimna, that uh, we need to hasten the pace of, um, of investment so that uh, we can create jobs. But there are certain things that cannot wait. I mean, you go uh, into our estates, young men are looking hopeless because they don't have anything to do. So there are certain simple things that we can do more or less immediately. I was in Kenyatta Market um, uh, yesterday. Uh, I went to the garage. And uh, you find, I mean, one garage is training 20, 30 boys, but the technology is old. I believe, um, I'm sure you, you must remember, in the olden days they had vehicles which had, uh, which had uh, points. But these days it's electronic, so we need to modernize, kind of bring help them acquire technologies that can enhance uh, their activity like uh, electronic uh, does diagnostic systems uh, for vehicles. I mean, build sheds for them so that when they spray vehicles, the dust or rain does not, uh, uh, does not fall on. So I'm saying that there are urgent things that we need to do with 800,000 that come into the job market almost every year. Yes, we are going to uh, do investments and we can use homegrown methods and homegrown institutions uh, to do that. So for me, jobs for our young people and engagement for our young people is key after uh, um, the, the clean environment. 
And then the third one is... Um, Hold. This is what you're going to do for me. You've heard the entry points. The things that are listed, they've got more. You know, all these are like lecturers. If I let them go on, you'll start taking notes. So here's how you're going to help me. So, several things have been, have been listed. Uh, employment, cleanliness, security, opportunities. So show me with your hands, show of hands, so that we can engage them on the issues which you have prioritized. How many here, show of hands, think first on the agenda is security? What they need to address first? Security? How many? Okay. Job opportunities. That's because all of you are waiting to graduate. <laughs> Strike that. Cleanliness. Sanitation. Water where you are. Sewage that works. Now I know the guys who still live with their parents, they don't know about the things they need to do. Right. If I lift one of those things and come back to here and challenge you gentlemen, for those who've said security, where would you start with security? When young people tell you they're insecure, what are they talking about? Uh, of course, I mean, the, the security is um, um, where they, we get, they get attacked, either in towns or uh, where the outside home or inside, uh, or inside uh, their homes. Basically, you're not safe uh, wherever you're living, physically. And uh, I do know that uh, this time has gone. Uh, it has gone to the extent on the other side where uh, people are even insecure from the police themselves. And I'm sure that my friends, uh, my, my, my friends know that. I mean, I, uh, so we need to look at security from a uh, two-point approach, uh, two uh, approach. That is security from criminals, but also security from the police. Because we know cases where police have just been shooting. I know cases in Ruta, cases that have had to inter intervene on, where young men and disappear, and you find they've died. And yet they are not criminals. But coming back to the normal security, when people are jobless, their attempts, they become desperate or they're habitual uh, criminals. But uh, our security operators are not sufficient. We do have uh, uh, police are supposed to offer security to our people. The ratio of police to, to, to uh, Nairobi citizens is not sufficient. Um, uh, is not sufficient. So we so need those are areas of investment. Yeah. So it's an area of investment. The second thing is that we probably need to move from man security and add on to electronic security as well. Right. And I'm aware they've been there their plans on investment, and that's an area that I would add on, uh, that, that I would add on. The third one is in the areas and in the homes we live, in the villages we live, I know that there are about 800 villages in Nairobi. And uh, these villages are so organized that it's a village headman. There's a social system that can be used to manage um, uh, the security within these villages. Where, Jim, tell me about security. Well, I think uh, when you talk about uh, security and insecurity, it means that if you are walking, you're always looking at the back to check whether somebody is, uh, you know, following you, whether somebody is about to mug you. When you are in your house, you're also concerned that somebody might break into the house, come and steal your goods and whatever you have. When you are, you know, driving a car along the street, you're also concerned whether somebody can put in uh, his heart into the vehicle and take out. When the ladies are walking on the streets, they are concerned that somebody might snatch their bags, etc., etc. When somebody is entering into a matato, one is not sure about uh, the safety of the, the, the journey. One is not sure whether one will arrive or whether the vehicle will be hijacked on the way. You know, when the ladies are going to the market very early in the morning, around 6 a.m., to buy milk, they are not sure whether they will be raped you know, by criminals on, this, on, the, on the way. So we're talking about a very serious problem of insecurity, which covers the whole spectrum of the society, whether it is the students, whether it's the mothers, whether it's the young people, whether there is a problem of rape, you know, etc., etc. So all these are problems which are associated with insecurity. But let me also say the cure and the sum of the solutions to some of these problems. Every society which is well organized has a police force 
which is supposed to provide security. And traditionally and international and according to world standards, you are supposed to have one policeman for about 450 citizens. In this country, we have an average of about one policeman for every 890 people. Nairobi is unique and is special because it is, has even a, a worse ratio. It's one for every 1,102, which means that we have about 1,200 police people here, whereas we should be having something close to four to 5,000 people. Now, when you have that type of a shortage of police, it means that the criminals are aware that we do not have sufficient police people to police the whole thing, to to, you know, to go out to patrol. They know that even if you take cases to the police station, you will not have adequate people to take care of you. So the problem of insecurity is tied up with shortage of in our police people to solve this, but it's more tied up to other social ills, social economic problems we have in the society associated with unemployment and growing population, and particularly young people who have nothing very serious to do. Philip, when they talk to you about security, what, what yeah. comes to your mind? Yeah, I think when you talk about security, you are talking about two things. One, you are talking about security of the people who live in a certain jurisdiction. You are talking about security for their property. So how do I intend to deal with this uh, issue? It's very simple. Knowing that I only have five years, a mandate for five years, and these are the things that I propose to do in that tenure. One. When I had an opportunity to run the city, I'd, I'd lit up the slums up to 70%. In the five years, in the first, two, in the first two, two years of my tenure, I'll push it 100%. Research reveals that uh, when you have lit the city properly, insecurity drops by 80%. The second thing that I will reintroduce, you are all aware that uh, in the year 2000, I started something we called community policy. Because the ideal situation is where you have one-to-one. -one. one policeman policing one citizen. But that is not possible. And therefore, the only way is to ensure that communities work with the police. These forums, in my tenure, five-year tenure, I'll set up 17 community policing centers across the county so that you have the police engaging the communities. Police are able to... Um, police are able to, to react to a situation when they get information in good time. And therefore, I would want to bridge the distance between those who are being policed and those who are policing. This particular um, uh, problem will take three months to study community policing, and therefore, I'll be signing a memorandum of understanding with the Kenya uh, Police Service. The other thing that I will tend to do within five years, I'll ensure that the CCTV coverage shifts from about 5% that is current to 100%. You are well aware that by using technology, we can drastically reduce the issue of the security. Finally, creation of jobs. Jobs, jobs for youth. Youth, they need jobs. Because if they have something to do, they, have, they can earn a livelihood. I don't think they'll engage in acts of crime. So those are the things that I'll do within a period of five years. Right. So the, the, the last one, sorry, I forgot. You said final. The, the last one. That really. means I move on. The last one. I'll come back to that last one. All right, one. okay. Here's the thing. I need you to see yourself in those things that are being talked about and see yourself in light of your family, your colleagues, your friends, your relations, where you live, the concerns you have. I need you to tell me if they're being addressed. So that we don't have a situation where you're being lectured to and you say our issues are not addressed. I'm going to come back from a break and start taking your questions. Where, where do you want me to start? Just so that I know. Only the front. Fine. I'll start from the front when I come back. But let's get representation. I've seen you. I'll come to you at the back. Actually, I might start with you because you're the only one who's lifted your hand there. Let us find if the areas they're talking about actually reflect on your current needs as residents of Nairobi. Shall we do that? Please give them a clap as we go into a break. Welcome back. We are live at Strathmore. This is a KTN production in conjunction with Strathmore, the first gubernatorial debate. I need you to take this session very quickly. They've done the introductions. Oh, I need to tell you about this chair. 
<laughs> We're still expecting Waititu to come and join us. That is why that seat is there. Don't imagine I put it there for any other reason apart from the fact that he was invited. If he does show up, he'll sit and continue. Now, I'm going to take your questions as quick as I can so that we give them the challenge with, with a view of what they have said. So if you raise your hands, I will come to you as quickly as I can and take a batch of questions as we go forward. So I'm going to lose this one, chap chap. Testing, testing. Okay. My question goes to the aspiring governors. My question goes like this. But is anyone asked that more? Mbasalama. Mtie bidiko masoma. Di masoma be wezen kwa kwa. Yo si swali. Ita ke di jini. Si unaka unaka di jini. Ndaku nyaka na maik. Aya. Mi my question says eh. Sa. Salongo. Salongo ni moja. Mimi kama kijana wa mashinani. Kuna standard 8 dropout. Na kuna form 4 dropout. Na insecurity inanzia na standard 8 dropout kabla ifikia form 4. Ni measures gani mtaput in place ule kijana kitoka standard 8 dropout aise pata fees ya kwenda nini secondary ama wezi pata uwa form 4 aise pata graduation ana nominate and pia kama ni university kusomea. Ni measures gani mko in place hata wao mtu akitoka ako na activity ya kufanya ana generate income daily bread na shelter. That's the case. Quickly, quickly, quickly. My question goes to Namukesia, and it is that would you say community policing has worked considering that the crime is still prevalent? Which is your community? Where do you live? I live outside. Is it safe or unsafe? It's unsafe. Give him the location. It hasn't worked. <laughs> quickly. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rick. Uh, like energy, so, energy, energy. Um, my question is to the aspiring governors of Nairobi. Um, what solutions do you have for the transport uh, system in Nairobi? We have a city whereby the Matatu operators go on strike and basically the public transport system collapses. Thank you. Transport. My name is Koi Kengatua. I'm a business training consultant. My question is to all of you. Unemployment. Every, every aspirant is talking about employment. Unemployment. How are you going to deal with it? You've all had opportunities to work in the government and private sectors. What have you done to deal with things like creating internships for graduates? What have you done yourself to create job opportunities for people? And would you consider giving tax breaks to companies who create employment? Thank you. Uh, good evening. My question is going direct to Honorable Jim Nambaru. Honorable Jim Nambaru, we all are aware that you have a case in court for recent conclu conclusion primary nomination. If court will rule out that you are not going to contest this governorship position, what will you do next? I didn't know I still have aspirants here. Could aspirants on nominations but over? Thank you very much. Okay. My name is Albert. Uh, my question is directed to the, the three of you. Actually, um, I was impressed with the way you, uh, you have a lot of research, statistical research and history about Nairobi City. And uh, here comes a situation where uh, a US-based uh, research institute uh, uh, listed Nairobi City as one of the worst, uh, uh, top 10 worst cities to stay in. And now uh, my question is, how are you going to link, uh, how are you going to make Nairobi City uh, a place where uh, you can uh, stay easily, whether you are in a, in a slum or in an, uh, an estate, particularly for the Dr. Kidero who stated maybe 800 villages that are found in Nairobi. So how are you going to link and make all the 800 villages is a better place for anybody to come and invest in. Thank you. Am I done with this side? Are you writing those notes? I want to finish with this side before I come this other end. I'll come on this side. I'll finish this side first. Quickly. Good evening. My name is Eddie. Eddie Charles from Strathmore. I have two short questions. One for all of them. We've all heard what they said and According to me, they've not mentioned anything about corruption. 
I'd want to know what they are going to do about corruption, seeing that Kenya is among the most corrupt countries in the world. My second question goes to uh, Honorable uh, Kidero. Uh, how is he going to deal with the terrorist attacks uh, in security where we have the, like Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda bombing the, the, the city? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Quick responses, just a minute each. Who's ready? Jim, are you ready? Are you ready, Dr. Go. Yep. Hold up your mic. Uh, Louis, thank you very much. Um, it's a bit of a pity that, um, that some of the questions that have been asked, I was discussing with uh, um, a friend of mine who's disabled, deaf and dumb. And I believe uh, uh, she must have been at home where she is, kilometer 101, Uko behind uh, Kenyatta University. I believe she must be watching. And I, I don't know whether we probably in future we make provisions so that we have interpreters for the, uh, those who cannot uh, hear, uh, who, 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 can, who, who cannot hear, who cannot hear. Uh, because I mean some of the questions that are being asked, are very, very, the very, very things we were discussing, we were discussing together uh, on the issue of, uh, I'll take the issue of the, the school, uh, the school dropouts and uh, uh, and uh, the study that was done that appeared in the economic uh, uh, the international economic review last week that showed that Kenya is the second worst city next to Te next to Tehran. Um, the statistics I gave uh, kind of uh, shows that we have an average of 800,000 people coming in into the job market at various levels, and uh, something needs to be done urgently. Uh, you will recall that previously in the olden days we had the technical schools at the secondary level and then we had the polytechnics, village polytechnics and polytechnics and that sometimes, and I think it was good wisdom they were turned into universities. So right now when people drop off at a standard eight and from four, they really don't have anywhere to go to. Uh, the fortunate thing is the mandate of the early childhood development and uh, post-secondary school education have been given to the counties. So the first thing I will do is to work with the authorities to ensure that we do build um, uh, uh, technical colleges and technical institutes where we can train artisans and we can train technicians. When I was in Mumias, I did two projects. One is the electricity generation project from Bagas and uh, the ethanol uh, project from, um, from molasses. And both times when we wanted high-pressure uh, high welders, we had to import welders who can speak English or Swahili from India and from the Philippines. And I think these are jobs that if we have institutions that can train our guys, they can be done. If you want um, um, electronic technicians uh, uh, for, for um, delicate equipments like distillers, we still have to import them. And I believe that we have sufficient industries and factories that we, we could. So one is to build institutions uh, uh, that, can, um, that, that can train them. The second thing is that there are certain things I talked about garbage. We, we talked about garbage and uh, the, the removal of garbage from, our, from our, our, our streets. Some people might dispute the numbers, whether it's 2,400 tons a day, whether it's 2,000 or 3,200, which is the figure I have. Uh, this can actually be turned into, if we built, uh, we could actually build um, uh, 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 plants that uh, can use garbage to generate uh, uh, generate uh, elec elec electricity. And earlier on, when um, I was waiting to come in, I sat with uh, Paulo Ching, who's uh, the deputy dean, and he was telling me this great story of the engineering school that is being built right here in in Strathmore, and uh, about the the climate innovation center and uh, the the funding that. Uh, they have from World Bank uh, to start to start this, and uh, this is supposed to uh, it should be a breeding ground for uh, environmentally friendly uh, organ funding, or environmentally friendly organisations. And if when I come in as governor, I think I'll work very very closely with uh, Strathmore to make that a reality because that will be a platform to generate uh, generate quite a lot of quite a lot of jobs and. 
when we were talking about security a little bit earlier on, uh, there are things that we can do uh, to enhance security, but it doesn't cost any more. Uh, the city council has got the city inspectorate uh, department. And uh, uh, from what I know they do, uh, doesn't add that much value apart from uh, rise, raising the cost of doing business with uh, our business, uh, with our business uh, people. I mean, I would, on the first instance, convert that, retrain them and convert that into, um, into a metropolitan, uh, uh, a metropolitan uh, police. Uh, let, me come, let me come back to you in a bit. I want to hear Jimna's responses before I go there. Well, <clears throat> there are several issues which were raised which pertain directly to me. Let me deal with the easier one. I have no case, or there is no case which is outstanding. So that matter is, <laughs> does not uh, arise. So unless another one comes on board, because uh, we have very many lawyers. <laughs> So and, uh, uh, we have very many lawyers in the country, and therefore you never know about tomorrow. But the, the point is that we are prepared uh, to deal with any uh, issues. The issue of unemployment is a very serious issue, and I addressed it, and I said the first way of dealing with it is doubling the economy of Nairobi. I said I had the three pillars to deal with that. Let me comment on them just very quickly. The first one I said that we want to create an economy of 24 hours within the city, within the county of Nairobi. I think when you talk about the school dropout and all these other people, we want to find a way where they can enter into that 24-hour economy, which is very, very important. The concept of 24-hour economy must be taken a little bit further than what people just think about it on the CBD. I've been saying that there are some schools, for instance, for instance primary schools, secondary school. At 5 o'clock, they are closed. Students go home, but with good arrangements. They can become colleges in the evening at night. Are we together? <laughs> so, so it's not just a question of trading on the street, on the, uh, in the town. That is one of the areas entertainment industry can work on 24 hours. I've been talking about the judiciary itself so that you get the concept of 24-hour economy. We have a lot of cases outstanding in the high court, and we can have some judges and magistrates working during the day, at night, we can have another bunch of judges and magistrates dealing with those cases. So we might ask ourselves, but we do not have enough judges or magistrates. But some of the lecturers in law schools can become magistrates or prison judges at night. And they can help to deal with these issues at night. So the whole idea of 24-hour economy must be seen just beyond the normal idea of people trading. The 24-hour economy is very important. At night, we can cross some streets and the hawkers can do businesses on those streets. On Saturdays, afternoons, when many shop shops are closed, we can cross streets and we can allow even Juakari people to come and exhibit their goods on those streets. <laughs> and, uh, and, on, and on Sundays, after the service, because many Kenyans are gondre, you know streets can be opened and the goods can be displayed in those streets. Now, these are things which happen in other countries, but we would like to introduce them into the city. To have a 24-hour economy, there are other things we have to address, which we have talked about. One of them is insecurity. We must write the whole city. You know, CBD must be well lighted. All the alleys which are dark must be lighted so that we do not have opportunities for criminals, you know, to take, a, you know, to take action. Okay, the other know. point I want to add there, because it's a very important thing, mm -hmm. the transport system must also be efficient to be able to transport people at night. So the issue of 24-hour economy is very, very important. Let me to com point about the two other. The other one which is critical to this nation is the housing sector. The shortage of housing in Nairobi is about 500,000 houses, which are the short end, the lower end of the market. That is the uh, cubicles, cubes, you know, one bedrooms, one rooms, you know, hostels for students. Because you remember after 2003, we, increased, we opened up the education sector. We made free primary school education free. So those students are now starting to get into a place where they are going to the university. They are coming to Nairobi, where most of the universities are congregating. But we did not build hostels for these students. If we build these houses, they become a catalyst for economy, and you can imagine the nails you require, the amount of sad, and the amount of employment which you will create associated with the housing sector. And the final one, which is very important, because we are also talking about the dropouts and all these people before they go to colleges or other places, 
We want to increase the number of markets where people can go and trade. And let me say this, to get out of poverty, urban poverty, people must learn how to trade. Trading nations, the nations which prosper, are nations which trade. The families which progress a lot are also those who get involved in commerce. This county must be involved with commerce. Every community must be involved in commerce and building more markets. And we want to double the markets in the next five years. That is how we are going to double the GDP of five, in five years. If you double the GDP in five years, you are talking doubling employment, reducing crime by half, and many other things associated with the doubling of the economy. Those are the pillars five three pillars for building and doubling the economy in five years it means a growth rate of average of 15 percent per annum it, it has been done I somewhere to else now. I listen to Philip. Thank, you. Um, th thank you Luis there are four areas that I will quickly look at one one of the participants talked about people who drop out at eight or people who terminate at eight, and others who end uh, at form four. Now those who pass, who pass, particularly from the poor families and don't have school fees, during my tenure as a town clerk, I introduce a bursary, I provide 100 million shillings. If elected, I will set aside 200 million shillings to help the poor so they can proceed to secondary education. Now, um, not all of us, not all of us um, are endowed in terms of academics, I know that those who are talented in terms of um, um, performing arts and sports, and there are many Nairobians who can really earn a living if they are supported. If elected, I intend to set aside 200 million shillings annually as a soft loan to extend to these youth so that they can develop their talents. The third area is women. Women um, account for about 52% of our total population in Nairobi. Most of them are the ones who suffer. I also intend to set aside or to set up a, um, a women development fund with a budget of 200 million shillings every year, a soft loan, so that they are able to engage in useful employment. The other thing that one of the participants talked about was the failure of community policing to work. It has failed because we have decided that it should never work. And that's why I'm saying that upon taking over office, I will sign a memorandum of understanding with the Kenya Police Service so that it is clear on what they need to do and what the county needs um, to provide. The other area is uh, transport that uh, we talked about. Um, we keep on blaming the Matatus for creating uh, congestion. I tend to disagree. What I intend to do if I'm given a chance to be the first governor of the county of Nairobi is to create a public line where vehicles of high capacity will use. So those people who want the luxury of moving in four vehicles from one family, the daughter is driving one, son driving one, the wife, and so on and so forth, they will have to drive on lanes which are congested. But those who choose to use public transport, they will move on this particular line. The other thing that I'll do is to encourage investors to um, bring in high capacity vehicles and uh, waivers so that these vehicles are able to pick up passengers for, from sub-terminuses. I'll create sub-terminuses out of um, a radius of 50 kilometers from CBD so that the Matatus terminate passengers at those sub-terminuses and these high capacity vehicles pick up the passengers, ride, give them a ride to CBD. I wish also sub subsidize those investors who come to the county of Nairobi and intend um, to invest in public transport. The other thing that I'll do, I will wipe out all on-street parking and create parking silos so that those spaces are freed for public transport. Now those parking silos will be used for the purposes of those who want the luxury of driving into town. They can stack their vehicles in parkings, but those who choose to use public transport will have an integrated system where it is efficient, easy, and cheap. Old Philip. Where am I? Very fast. My question is to the three candidates. If you were growing up in the 80s and you were poor, you looked like their heroes. They wanted to look like you. They wanted to talk like you. Today's urban poor don't sound, to, don't sound like you, don't want to be like you. 
the leaders somersault on the roads, the leaders punch caterpillar trucks. What's happened? And as governor, what can you do to help? Well, first, those ones are not here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so don't put it on them. <laughs> um, my name is Levi Wangome from Strathmore Law School. And my question is to dwell um, mostly on the Hawkers case. You see that every day there is more or less cat and mouse chase between Hawkers and City Council. My question is, um, how are you going to make sure that this ends? And how are you going to make sure that the people who are paying taxes, who have shops in the, city, in the CBD, don't find it to be unfair to them that hawkers who have come into the CBD, um, who don't pay taxes, are going to be selling together with them. I don't know if your lecturer is happy to hear that's what you do when you graduate. I'll ask a question on education. Uh, I'm a diehard Eastlands uh, dweller, so I'll ask about Eastlands. Uh, from Outering Road going across. If you were diehard, yes. you'd be speaking Kiswahili. Yes, I. So, as you can Kiswahili, Kutoka Barabara Outering, Kuelekea Pandeyo, Tukienda Njiru, Vyuanja Vyote, Vya Vili Vyoachwa, Na Council, Vya Kujenga Shule za Upili. Aitha Vimenya Kuliwa, Na Vimepewa Watu Wa Mejenga Majumba, Ama Hakuna Kitu Chuchote Kinaendelea. Sasa, Nyinyi Kama Magavana, na otarajua kuwa unapanga mikakati gani kujenga hivyo vyo vya upili I can tell you for free yo si Kiswahili ya Islands <laughs> hurry up hurry up hurry up my name is Andrew Waithombe and my question is how are you going to ensure that that the people the 60% of the population in Nairobi who live in the slums are going to get education and in line with that that this education is going to help them get somewhere in the 24 hours economy that you seem to suggest? Or are you going to employ um, capitalist mentalism that the rich are the ones who are going to rule the country or the county? Very fast. Hi, to the aspiring governors, how do you intend to provide for my basic needs? This include, uh, for example, number one, food and water. Food, the price of food in the supermarkets right now is too much. For example, a packet of milk is 50 shillings. You're buying three nyanyas for 20 shillings. This is not affordable. There are areas in Nairobi without water. I mean, you go for days or for weeks without water. How do you intend to provide this? Number two, housing. Jimna has touched on this, but it's not affordable. For example, here in Madaraka, I mean, you're getting a house for between 30 to 50,000. This is not affordable. affordable. Health. The price of uh, our medical, I mean, in the hospitals, if you maybe even, if you sleep there for a day or a week, it's too expensive. Please take into account when answering this question, the issue of affordability. Affordability. Thank you. Yeah, boss. He kind of sums it all up. I don't think there's anything beyond that. <clears throat> Thank you, Luis. My question is, if we have to be the hub of Africa and therefore increase investment in Africa and therefore jobs, what specific measures are you going to take to reduce tax, to give investment, uh, investment support to those who want to come so that we can compete with the best cities in the world? Because I do believe we need to be the best in Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Louis. Uh, a few. One, two. Quickly. Okay. The first one, you've all scattered around the question of security. The constitution is clear. Provision of security is a function of the national government. Other than Mr. Kisia, no one seems to have, had, to have any idea of how they are going to work with the national government to ensure that security is actually adequately provided. Because other than that, other than the legislations you might make in terms of uh, strengthening the city inspectorate, there isn't really much that you are offering in terms of security. Secondly, I, I wish uh, Waititu was here because one of the biggest problems in this city, if you wanted to put up a school or you wanted to put up a new factory or a new industry, there will be no land for you to do so. Even if the city council wanted to put up a primary school or a secondary school, there is no land. There are land grabbers all over. And the people who are watching at home look at the three of you as representing the faces of those land grabbers. What is it you're going to do? <laughs> Come. 
Uh, this gentleman asked me nicely to contribute because he has a different stake. I'll give you one minute okay. from where you are. Okay, stand here so that I can see you. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Kobia. I'm one of the youthful candidates vying for the gubernatorial seat. And I asked Louis Otelo. <laughs> I, I asked Louis Otelo to give me an opportunity to come and represent the youth agenda. No one is talking about the youth. We have been classified by the Constitution as the special interest groups. And clearly, you can see we are special interest groups because uh, no one identifies with us, no one identifies the needs the youth have. And I've not had any one of them talking about the youthful agenda. We are the majority, but we are treated as minority, even with the Constitution. We are treated as the special interest groups. So I'd like them to address that concern, and hopefully, uh, if I'm allowed, I could take my to seat. <laughs> I asked you to be nice, not to set me up with Waititu. <laughs> I don't want Waititu to look for me in this city. Very quickly, Dr. Ari, responses for those. I'm all out of time now, so you have to go uh, very fast. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ari. First of all, congratulations for uh, uh, being admitted as a fellow of the International Institute of, of Management. Yeah. Uh, I think the questions you've raised are very, very important in terms of... Um, of uh, of uh, attracting investment. Uh, there is obviously local investment and there is direct foreign investment. But let me start with the local investment. I think our country has done very, very well with the local investment. When all banks were closing, uh, equity came and has become the biggest bank within the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, Safaricom and uh, the M-Pesa, which is an international uh, phenomenon, uh, the small-scale industries which are in, um, which are in Kariobangi. And uh, so I believe we have internal capacity to, do, to make our own investments. And the tax regimes, I do not think, are discrimi discriminative. On the direct foreign investment, uh, the, the problem has been that it takes too long. After the repeal of the, 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 the licensing act, of 1968, which uh, I think Mr. Jim knows very, very well because he worked uh, in that department for a long time. Uh, the new investment uh, law, which was passed and signed by the president in 2003, uh, rather than simplifying the investment process, made it very, very complex. So it takes you to go to about 14 offices and uh, 18 months if you want to make an investment. So the first thing I would work with. Um, uh, the stakeholders to reduce the complexity of, uh, of making or make, uh, do, doing investment uh, in the country. And as for uh, investments that are outside Nairobi, I mean, those are on, on a tax holiday for a long time. So I don't see taxes as the main hindrance, but I see as the process of uh, making, uh, making the investments. Uh, the, second, um, the second issue, I think, which was raised was uh, land grabbing. We know what has happened, um, where school land has been grabbed, it has been sold. I'm sorry, let me plead. I've never grabbed anybody's land, and I have absolutely no intention of ever getting any land, any land for free. We know hostels that have been grabbed. I know the fight is still on for uh, the High Ridge Hostel, which was grabbed in the, in the last... Uh, uh, less than the last 12 months. And uh, my friend from Outering said that it is true that um, uh, the development, uh, the, the, the land for social amenities like schools and hostels have not been left because they are left but people take them and sell them. And I can assure you when I become the governor, not if, when I become the governor, I will I will ensure that land for public amenities are reverted and used for what they were meant for. Okay, I'm all out of time. What is the one line they need to take home that they'll remember you for? Just one line. I care. And I will change Nairobi. Okay. Go ahead. There are a few issues and I won't combine them together because the role of governor has to be understood very clearly. The role of a governor of Nairobi 
Let's take the policing. That function is with the central government. We talk about the food prices. You know, the food policy, food is grown outside Nairobi, so it has to do with the national food policies for the country. So there are few issues which have to be dealt with the nation, by national government. Even when you are talking about building Africa as Africa's capital, we are talking about tax support, tax incentives. There are a lot of issues we have to do with immigration, work permit for all those people who are going to work here. All that are matters which have to be dealt with by the national government. And uh, what I want to say is this uh, regarding all these issues. <coughs> the role of governor of central, of the role of a governor of Nairobi, besides performing the functions we have talked about, you know, cleaning up the city, making sure that the schools function, making sure that the hospital are okay, making sure that the city is clean, making sure that the security is okay, is to be an activist governor. He has to be an activist because he has to persuade the central government to provide the services. He has to persuade the central government to see what they need. He has to catch your the central government to introduce these incentives. He has to be an activist because he does not have the resources to do those things, but they belong to the central government. Let me talk about the road, because we, we have to talk about a very important thing yeah, called the triangle of development in this, in this Nairobi. You, we call it Nairobi, Fika, Fika, Tara, Kangundo, Machakos, Machakos, Nairobi. That is going to be the new triangle of development. We are going to build the road between Outerling Road and Tara Market so that you open up that area so that you have industrial land, which is cheap. Now, that is the role of the central government to do that. The governor of Nairobi has to persuade, has to besiege, has to cajole the central government to develop those roads. Are we together? So the governor, so he has, he has to be an activist governor. So the governor has to have the courage to call upon the central government to tell them it is your responsibility, sir. We need this if this country is going to move forward. 60% of the economy of Kenya is in Nairobi. So if Nairobi works, Kenya works. But a lot of policies have to be done by central government. So the governor must be courageous enough, must be brave enough to demand from the central government these services. Are we together? Yes. Where, Thank is, you. where is he? Yes. Hold on. Have you identified that person? Where is he? You keep saying he has to, he has to. Where you, course, are you pointing uh, us to one? Yes, of course, I am a humble person. And uh, I want to say that given my background, I've worked as, uh, I, you know, I've been a chairman of Nairobi Stock Exchange for Point a long time. Jim now. Tell us. And that person is none other than Jimna Baru, who is in front of you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Louis. Now, as I seek to be a servant leader, if given an opportunity to serve the people of the county of Nairobi, I will deal with issues that my colleagues have refused to talk about. One is the issue of corruption. <laughs> corruption thrives where there are no procedures and systems. In 36 months that I was at the, at the council, I made every effort to introduce systems and procedures. If given an opportunity, I will build on what I've done, and I can assure you, within 24 months, the county of Nairobi will be fully automated. The second thing that I will do, and which I did, I institutionalized the fight against corruption at the county or the city by bringing in CASA and putting it as a secretariat to help us fight corruption. If I'm given an opportunity, I will build on what I've done so that those who have for decades thrived through corrupt means are put to an end within the shortest time uh, a period, uh, a period. The other thing that uh, we talked about is the issue of solid waste, which my good friend Evans Odiambo uh, talks about uh, garbage. Uh, during my tenure, 36 months only, I was able to sign a grant for the county of Nairobi to a tune of 17 billion Kenya shillings. The work to decommission Dondora has started, and soon Dondora will be producing power and other byproducts, but the intention is to close down Dondora in a period of seven years. We shall also create a landfill in Rai or any other area that we identify, all that will be delivered in another five years. The, 
Um, my other colleague, who also is aspiring, aspiring to be a governor of the county of Nairobi, I talked about the youth, maybe you're not here. Uh, the issue of land grabbing, you remember, I fought tooth and nail. My good friend Evans Odiambo has talked about um, High Ridge. I actually went on site in person and I fought very hard and was served with a court order. Thank God I had a good lawyer. I would have been jailed for six months for contempt. <laughs> uh, therefore, if given an opportunity, I'll continue against the war of land grabbing and those who have grabbed and used the court process to recover the land that would have been solid. The issue of food security, although it is an issue of central government, as a governor, I will not sit, sit behind. I know 60% of our people live in informal settlements. And therefore, there's something I can do as a governor. I will make sure that I wipe out all the fees and charges for food that is coming into the county of Nairobi. Because I know the county of Nairobi does not produce food. The issue of what my colleagues are calling uh, hawkers, I call them people in informal trade. I want to let you know, I want to let you know that during my short stint at City Council of Nairobi, I was able to get a cabinet approval to build 22 markets in the county of Nairobi, and therefore, if given an opportunity, I know where the key is, I'll open the door, I'll invite investors to build 22 markets so that we can accommodate all those people who are in formal trades. Those people who you find um, 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 selling wares in the streets, they don't do it because they like it, they, do, they don't do it because of choice. We have put them in that situation. And I think it is our responsibility to get these people out of that uh, awkward um, uh, uh, situation. Now, um, finally, the issue of security is important. And there's no way we can leave the central government. There are interventions that we can put in place, which I've talked about. For example, introducing a community policing system but in a structured manner and entering into a memorandum of understanding with Kenya police so that they cannot backtrack on what they have signed. Lighting up of the, of the city, I've said that I light up the entire county in a period of two years. When I was there, I lit up the informal settlements by 70%. Given an opportunity, 24 months, the entire informal settlements will be lit. All the streets will be lit in a period of uh, 24 months. Therefore, why am I different? I've talked about issues that people don't want to talk about, issues to do with corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one last. I, 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 during my tenure for the first time, faced them head on. You remember I carried out a comprehensive human resource audit to weed out those ghost workers. Nobody had the guts to do it. I did it. If given a chance, If given a chance, I'll build on to what I did so that we can employ you youth who are coming out of universities to come and occupy the spaces, the gaps that have been identified or were identified by Price Waterhouse Coopers. What? There is employment for you. Finally, what do you want to remember yes. about Philip Kissier? I put people first. I put people first. So, even me, I'm aspiring. <laughs> but I'm aspiring to get more time for this show. I know I haven't exhausted your end. I don't even want to look behind me because they've not even done half of what they want to do. So since all of you know how to twiddle your fingers and write stuff, maybe we can get the show to continue. Same place, another day, another time. But these gentlemen have done so well to come before you. They didn't know what you're going to ask because that's how I do my shows. So for their effort, please give them a good clap. And this is the kind of effort you get from KTN. We want to do this for you so that we bring it to you to understand what the city will be about. Those of you who managed to ask questions where you got direct responses, you can see how it goes. Uh, we will try and do this again. Try as much as you can to participate. I told them and you at the beginning, it doesn't start at the end, it starts at the beginning. So those of you who wait, if I tell you to put your hands up now, I know half the room will have their hands up. So next time when I come here, just start with your hands up before I even ask a question. Thank you very much, Swathmo. We have been happy to be here. Give yourselves a clap.
Choice 2013, a production and effort of KTN to show you exactly where you will be able to choose your next leader, your governor, your president, which is also coming up, and invite you to participate. Talk to us. Tell us what more you want us to do to indeed enable you to make an informed choice. My name is Louis from Strathmore. Have a good night.